Hi guys, it's Sasha from Vaishio Photography. In this video, we're going to go in greater detail on how we did the post-processing of the award-winning photo in a rangefinder on page 69. As promised in the previous video, I'm going to go over in greater detail on how we did the post-processing of this photo on page 69. Before I reveal my post-processing secrets and my award-winning photo, I just wanted to remind you, this photo was taken with one speed light. Um, I used the Photix Metros Plus Flash with a Magmar grid on it, and it was triggered by the Photix Odin 2 trigger. Let's turn around and go to my computer! <laughs> so here's a folder with all the photos from the session, and today we're going to be focusing on these two photos down here. So first I'm going to open up this photo in Adobe RAW. And the goal in the post-processing for this photo will be to get the full tonality file with less contrast and to get more details in the photo. So when I open up this photo in Photoshop, it's going to be a neutral file. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of each step that I did under all of these tabs. So um, first, I set my white balance to 6000 Kelvin with a tint of 6. Because my exposure was good here straight from the camera, I didn't have to adjust the exposure. I increased the contrast a bit because the highlights were overblown in this photo, as you can see here and here. I brought down the highlights and the whites so that I can recover some of the highlights in the photo. Then I opened up the shadows and the blacks to get more detail in the shadows. Then nothing was touched under the tone curve. Under detail, I did standard sharpening with masking and then I reduced the noise a little bit because this photo was taken at ISO 500. Under the hue saturation luminance tab, nothing was touched under the hues. Under the saturation tab, I brought down the orange to reduce the skin saturation. Under luminance, I decreased the reds and increased the oranges to brighten up the skin. And then I decreased the magenta to darken this jacket right here. Moving on, nothing was touched under split toning and really the last step I did here was under camera calibration. I increased the blues to get some extra vibrance across this photo. So now I'll be opening up the photo in Photoshop in Adobe RGB color space in 16-bit to take advantage of all the colors in the gamut, especially since we're using the ASO monitor, which practically displays all of the Adobe RGB color space. So now I have the photo open up in Photoshop and this is already the final edit of the photo. Here is the before version, again, after, before. And I'm gonna walk you through every single layer. So in the first layer, I rotated the photo for the alignment so that the canvas backdrop was straight. Then I did the free tran transform and I fixed the perspective by pushing out the corners. So. The next step, I wanted to create the overall vintage tonality I was going for. And for this, I used the Alien Skin Exposure 6. I used the color preset Color Fading Coda Color. That's 1942-1953. And then I slightly modified the preset to my taste. Then I used the Exposure Adjustment Layer to further flatten the contrast before I do the full edit. So here it is. And here are my settings. So there's no exact recipe on how to do this. Each photo will have a different setting and it's really what pleases your eye. What's important to remember here is that in this photo, I wanted to create a layer mask that hides the highlights and exposes the shadows. So in order to achieve this, you gotta go to apply image and then you hit invert for the photo. Um, if you don't invert the mask, this will hide the shadows, and if you do invert the mask, it, hi it hides the highlights, which is what we were going for here. Then I used the black and white adjustment layer in luminosity blending mode to adjust the brightness of the various colors in this photo. And here I mainly focused on bringing up the yellows and the reds, and bringing down the blues. And again, there's no specific recipe for this one either. The next step was adding the two gradient maps for further color grading. So the first gradient map was in color blending mode to just affect the colors and not the luminosity of the photo. And I did it at the 10% opacity because here's how it looks with 100 and that's just too much for me. So let's bring it back down to 10. The second gradient map was in normal blending mode with the colors yellow and blue 
to warm the midtones and cool down the highlights and the shadows. And this was just a slight adjustment because I, I kept it at 3% opacity. This is at 100% and it's kind of like too psychedelic for me. So let's bring it back down to 3%. After gradient map, I did the curve adjustment layer for burning parts of the photo that I wanted to be darker. So everything that's white is what I made darker here. There's the before and after. This just makes your eye go more towards the two subjects in the photo. In the next step, I wanted to add tonal contrast to the main subjects and the shell. So for this, I ran Make Sharpener Pro. And in this step, I only did the structure adjustment. And let me show you here what I'm talking about. So under Output Sharpener, I did not touch the adaptive or the output sharpening. In this step, I increased the structure and then I decreased the local contrast to reduce some of the artifacts caused by initially increasing the structure. I'm gonna hit cancel. So we're here. Then I used the Color Effects Pro Detail Extractor to bring out the details in the photo and the skin was masked out in the plugin. These next two layers that I did were to remove this tag right here because I felt that it was too distracting for this photo. Next, I created two curve adjustments to lighten the center and darken the outside to create some vignetting in the photo. And here's a before and after again. Then I used this curve layer here to darken the jacket, the purple jacket right here. So there's the before and after in that. The last step that I did was to make the overall tonality of this photo bluer through color fill adjustment layer in normal blending mode. And I did this at a very low opacity of 2% because this is how it looks at 100. So <laughs> let's be modest and keep it at 2%. And these are all the steps that I did to get the final product of this photo. So here's another before and after. So as you can see, I didn't do any over the top edits. The two main goals I had for editing this photo were for the nice color grading and for the viewer's eye to focus on the two main subjects in this photo. And there you have it guys, my post-processing steps on how I got my award-winning photo. I hope the steps were easy to follow and if you guys have any questions, please leave comments below. And I just like to challenge more photographers out there to go out and do something for yourself that's out of your comfort zone. Um, this year, Yannick and I started to challenge ourselves more by stepping out of our comfort zone and trying something new. And to be able to create a photo like that with just using one speed light and I got Rembrandt and split lighting, this was the greatest happiness in my life at that moment. <laughs> Thank you again for watching my video. Don't pay attention to my shirt. Another question, please. I will be more than happy to answer any questions you guys have. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already.